Well hello and welcome to my latest video. We're in the Northern Hemisphere here in the United States of Kingdom and when you're in the Northern Hemisphere this time of year November mid-November it gets dark fairly early and if you're going out on your bike it's a good idea to have one of those special things that you use when it's dark. Yes, I'm talking about a bell. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm talking about lights. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, good idea to have some lights on your bike. So I thought I'd go through uh, some of the bike uh, lights, some of the bike lights that I've got and that I use. Um, there will be a kind of review of some of them, kind of discussion. A quick disclaimer, uh, I've bought all these lights myself, none of them have been given to me and it is not supposed to be a comprehensive review of every bike light on the market. After all, how am I going to have every bike light on the market? So I'm just talking about the lights that I've got. So let's get stuck in first of all on what I think is probably the most important light and that is a rear light. Uh, and I think not only a rear light when it's dark, but I think a rear light all the time. And in fact, whether it's uh, 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 summer or spring or autumn or winter, I think it's a good idea to have a rear light. So let's go through, first of all, the light that I use most and the light that I like the best. And this is called an exposure trace R. Um, I suppose that's a bit like tracer you know when they used to shoot down you know german planes you know during the the great brexit wars uh anyway it's trace r not tracer and this is the light and it attaches by means of a bracket which is this bracket which goes around your seat post and it clips in like that and i'll say first of all it's a very secure in the bracket it's never come off, never fallen off the bike, despite the bumps. And if I turn it on, says he. Right. If I turn it on like that, I'll shine it briefly at the screen, so I'm blinding those people who aren't blind already, of course. And you can see it's a pretty effective light. Now, I'm not going to go through uh, lumens. I'm not going to go through run times. I'm not going to go through all that rubbish. If you want to find that out, look on your... Um, local, uh, your local bike shop, ask in your local bike shop, or you can just Google the various bits of information. But that is a constantly flashing light, which I have on the rear of my bike all the time, and I'm very pleased with it, except one thing about it is it attaches via this rubber strap. Okay, and this is actually a replacement rubber strap that I've put on because the original rubber strap, which is this one, broke. Now, the thing about lights, and I'll kind of come to this uh, a bit later on as well, lights are great when they work. If lights don't work, or they don't stay on your bike, then they're useless. Okay, it doesn't matter how cheap they are, it doesn't matter how expensive they are, if they break, then they're no good to you. So, this, I've putting it on and taking it off because I use it on different bikes, um, but that shouldn't make a difference. So, it broke. Luckily, uh, it broke actually when I was in the garage as opposed to when I was out on the road. Otherwise, uh, I suspect I would have lost the light, which I didn't. So anyway, exposure, trace, R light. This light, which you may have seen, is by a company called C-Sense. And it's quite expensive. And I did a, um, an unboxing of it when I first got it a few years ago. And I said some quite good things about it. Um, but it doesn't work. Now, see, you're supposed to press the button there and it doesn't work. Now, uh, it worked for a while, then it didn't work. I may even have got a replacement, but then it went wrong again. Now, a, a light that doesn't work is worse than useless, but what is even worse than worse than useless is a bike that is a light that works some of the time. Because then you, you just don't know for sure. You think it's going to work, and then it doesn't work. At least light that doesn't work, you know it doesn't work, you get rid of it and you buy another one. But if it doesn't work some of the time, you think, oh, well, next time I use it, it'll work. Anyway, it doesn't. So the funny thing is, and I, I actually don't think this is particularly funny, this is uh, a front light and this is a rear light. And they've got all kinds of, of claims, the C-Sense people, that it, you know, it flashes faster when you slow down and 
you, you know, there's all this kind of clever technology in it that, you, you know, tells you what the time is on Mars or, or you know, it, it tells you how your shares are doing or whether your mortgage payments are going to go up. I mean, there's all kinds of really clever technology in it that doesn't fucking work. OK, so all I can say is my experience, OK, my experience of these C-Sense lights is great while they work, shit when they don't, they don't work, they're no good to me, OK. The only reason I've kept them is so I can make a video about them. OK, next light I'm going to show you is this one. In fact, I'll show you both of these because these are both cat eye lights. And these are both very good lights. And they switch on, well, you press a button, <laughs> big, big surprise, you press, you press two buttons there, you've got two lights. Very strong, very powerful, very effective lights. The only thing I'd say about these lights, and this one is just the same, by the way, if I can work out how to switch this on, there it is. Um, this is a kind of like a double, double light thing, this is a single light thing. Very good lights, very strong lights, very effective lights, but they are battery powered. And, I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll know from your... Your, your science or your biology or whatever it's called, I can't even turn this off now, God. is that um, batteries are not good for the planet. Are, are batteries not good for the planet? Or is the elect electricity that's not good for the planet? What is it that, you, you know when people glue themselves to bridges and, and, and stuff like that, is it, is it because they don't like batteries or is it, is it for some other reason? Anyway, batteries, I think in lights, are a bit of a pain. Um, they have some advantages, which is that, sorry, I'm just now trying to work out how to turn this off. Usually it's a long press, isn't it? Sometimes it's a, there it is. Um, battery lights do have some advantages, don't get me wrong, because you can, you know, stop at a garage or shop or most places and buy some spare batteries. And you can do that probably throughout the world if, if you've got sort of standard batteries, which I think these do. I think these are double A batteries. So that is a big advantage. Disadvantage, of course, is that you have to stop off and buy some batteries and so on and so forth. And you, whereas otherwise, you come home from the ride, you plug in your USB light, and incidentally, this works off a USB charger, uh, as do the C sense lights although they don't work at all and so you plug you come home you plug in your light and you power it up as opposed to having to remember to carry batteries so you might have a view on that you might think you prefer batteries or you might prefer a usb charger leave a comment down below as to what you prefer this light uh i don't know where i got this from this is a very tiny hardly visible light um it's just a kind of well, I don't know what it is actually. I don't know why you even bother to use it. And it's it's uh, is it battery? Yeah, it's probably a two CR, you know, the CR batteries. What are they called? Um, so I, I wouldn't recommend something like that. Fair, fair enough. If you've already got a light on your bike and you want to have another light, then put on one of these little things. Otherwise, don't bother. This particular light is a very interesting one, and this was on the Moulton bike, which I got recently when I swapped it with my mate Stuart for a Brompton. And this is actually attaches to the front wheel. There is a magnet that you attach to the wheel, and as the magnet on the wheel goes past, it engages with this magnet, and it powers this light. And it does work, and it works, well... I'm not sure it works effectively. It does work. It doesn't put out a very strong light, so it's a kind of running light on a Volvo, if you like. If you imagine Volvo-made bike lights, this is the kind of thing they'd make. But I really didn't think it was um, sufficient during the day. It's certainly not sufficient during the night. And being on the wheel, I had a tendency to kind of bang it against things, and I was worried it, was bro it would break. So it would break. Sorry. So in the end, I did. I took it off. Very clever design, though, and um, uh, I don't know whether it's made in Sweden or Holland or, or somewhere like that where it's permanently dark. Um, but anyway, that's that light, and that's the extent of my rear lights. Actually, no, I do have. This is actually an early version of the Exposure Trace R, and this operates off a battery, and again attaches on the same kind of bracket or same kind of rubber thing that the, my new exposure works on. So again, you can have a, I don't know if you can still buy this actually. Uh, I've had this for a few years. I got it from my friend Bash who sadly, sadly passed away some years ago, you know, uh, um, when he was hit by a car. Um, 
So um, anyway, battery powered rear light if that's what you want to use. Okay, moving swiftly on to front lights. Now I've got to say, although I have a fairly big collection of lights, I don't actually like riding in the dark. Um, and the main reason for that is my eyesight's not particularly good. I'm just not, you know, that confident, I suppose, you know, as I'm getting older and weaker and, and more frail and, and dementia and all kinds of things is creeping up on me. I suppose I just don't really like lighting in the dark. So I'm not that bothered about having a great collection of front lights that will allow me to, you know, light up a thousand meters ahead or when I'm pounding through the Amazon jungles or whatever it is on my mountain bike because I'm not going to do that. But I do have, as it happens, some very nice front lights. And one of the lights that I do have is this C-Sense front light beam. Now I'll say, I'll say one thing about but I've never actually put this on the bike, but it does work. And it works very strong. It's very strong light. Again, I don't know what the lumens are. Whether this is going to have the same problem as those other C-Sense lights and it, and it actually stops working, who knows? Uh, it works at the moment, but then I've never actually put it on the bike. But it's strongly made. It's powered from a USB. It's a powerful light. It looks like it's well made. Who can say? This one is not dissimilar, but this, this fits on a kind of Garmin type Wahoo mount on your, on your handlebar, by the way. This is a, a similar, not, well, I say it's a similar kind of light. It's a front light, similar design. This is made by Lazoin. And I think, did it go stronger than that? Yeah. Um, all of these lights have a kind of uh, a very bright mode, uh, a less bright mode, uh, a flashing mode, uh, and so on and so forth. So they tend to have at least those three modes. And as I'm sure you know, uh, the flashing mode uses less power than an always on mode and therefore the run time is going to be greater if you have it on flashing mode than if you have it on always on mode. If you're using it to uh, to be seen as opposed to see, uh, flashing mode might be useful. If you're using it because you want to see your way on a dark road then I think you want the full beam on like that. Okay so this is a USB powered uh, Lazine light, works perfectly well, tend not to use it. If I am using front lights because I'm going out maybe late, not necessarily later in the day, but I'm doing a longer ride and it's this time of year in the United States of Kingdom, say November, and you're thinking it's going to get a bit gloomy. And it does start to get a bit gloomy, around about sort of 3 o'clock, 3.30. So some kind of front light is a good idea. I have this Lazine light. Uh, which works quite effectively and there we are and that can go on the front of the bike and it's a useful light to be seen by and it's a useful light to at least see a certain amount by um, and it fits on with this rubber bracket it's USB charged and it's it's quite a good light now I do have another version of this let me just turn that off which uh, I think might be this version and one of the lights is a rear light I just read, which I think is this one. And one of the lights you can use either red or white, depending on how you set it. Unfortunately, I've lost the instructions and I can't work out how to do that. Now, this light, as you can see, I don't know if you can see because of its, its flashing. Anyway, there are three lights inside here, but only one is flashing and the other two don't seem to work. So it's a quite a strong single light, but even though I can press the buttons in kind of different ways, this side light here, okay, seems to suggest that for green light, it's working, but the other two lights, because they're showing orange and red, they're not working. I don't know why. Now that is quite a good light on its own. Sorry, that should probably have been with the rear light, shouldn't it? Um, but for some reason, the other The other two lights within this three light cluster, if that makes sense, uh, don't work. And this attaches with this same kind of rubber bracket around your handlebars that I've got there. And lastly, this is a small light. I can't remember where this came from. And this is, again, 
a small sort of B-scene flashing front light, uh, not good as a single light on its own, certainly if you're lighting in the dark, uh, probably useful as a daytime running light if you want to be seen from the front, and um, powered by a USB, very light, uh, not particularly strong, but seems to work fine. So, that is my a uh, collection of lights. You might say, well, that's quite a big collection of lights, Julian, for somebody who doesn't light in the dark. And I would say, well, fair point, guys, fair point. But it's always useful to be prepared, isn't it? So, you know, if you think one day, one day, I don't know, when I'm in I know, 79 or something, when I'm 64, I'm, actually, no, I'm, I'm past 64, but maybe one day when I'm 79 or something, I think, I know. Right. There are two things I always want to do in, to do in my life. Right? One is to learn the guitar, right? and one is to ride my bike at the age of 79 in the dark. Right? So I've got a few years to save up some money, buy some more lights, uh, and then I can go cycling in the dark. In the meantime, that's my collection of lights. Hope you found it useful. Um, should, I do, should I do links to all the lights? I'm not sure I can really be bothered, actually. I'm not, you see, I think the thing is, right, one light isn't that much better than another. I suppose if I was going to recommend one, I'd say, well, I've been pretty pleased with the exposure trace R. Um, not very happy when that rubber strap broke, as it happened, I had a spare rubber strap I, I can use. But the, by from that caveat, the light itself has never let me down. And as I said earlier in the video, if the light works, that is... Um, what is it? That's nine tenths of the law. Okay. A apart from that, forget about forget about brands. Forget about lumens, so long as it's reasonably bright. Forget about kind of runtime. Forget about uh, USB or battery charge, because that's your kind of personal choice, if you like. The key thing is, does it work? Does it work consistently? Is it robust? Will it last? Now, you could say that in order to achieve those things, you might have to pay a bit more money, and that may well be true. This is probably about 45, 50 quid, something like that. So it's not cheap compared to what you can get. But you know what they say? Buy cheap, buy twice. Uh, whereas Julian's view, of course, as you know, is buy expensive and buy three of them. So, hope you've enjoyed that video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.